Okay, so I'm going to do the TMI tag. I've got the questions on my laptop, so if I look down, I'm looking at the questions. And we'll get started. So, the first question is, what are you wearing? Well, I'm wearing a jumper from Sainsbury's. It's a huge jumper. I think it's a size 22 because I wanted it to be mega baggy and loose and it hangs off one shoulder. And I got this for 3 50 in a sale. I've got a white bodysuit from Primark on. I've got a bra from Debrenham's. I don't know if you meant to really go that far. I've got shorts from ASOS, denim shorts, and I've got these lovely burgundy tights that I got in the Topshop sale for a pound. Yes, that's right, a pound. Bargain. So that is what I've got on. I've got no shoes on and my hair is really messy today, so I do have to apologise for that. Number two, ever been in love? Yes. And still in love, even though he's annoying. I'm in love. Three, ever had a terrible breakup? Well, I have to really say no. Um, I've never, touch wood, <laughs> I've never been broken up with. I've always been the person breaking up with people, which makes me sound really awful. It's just that, yeah, it's just, that's the way it's just been. So, how tall are you? I am five foot four and a half, and the half is very important. Let me know, let me tell you. How much do you weigh? That is a personal question and I don't answer questions about my weight or my age because those are two questions you never ask a lady. <laughs> yes, I am a lady. Um, number six, any tattoos? Yes, I have this one here. And it's my shh tattoo. Um, Rihanna got this one done and I've been wanting a tattoo for years and I know it's tiny for a first tattoo but I never found anything that I could really stick with wanting so I would get an idea for a tattoo but I'd want to live with the idea for a while but then it was kind of like I just kind of grew out of the idea whereas this one as soon as I saw it I was like wow I really love that I really want to have that it's really quite different to have something on your finger and it is the exact size and replication and placement because I took a finger in a, a finger in I took a picture in of Rihanna doing this and then they actually took the direct transfer off the finger so yeah so that is shh, and it's got a couple of little dots after it and I absolutely love it and the next one I want is on my fingers as well because I want love here because Rihanna's got that one as well and I like it I like those ones on fingers I think they look quite nice and uh, no I don't care what it looks like when it's older because I love it now um any piercings yes I have my ears pierced twice so the second ones are a little bit closed up and I need to really re-pierce those myself by shoving something through them. Not as painful as it sounds to be honest because once the, the pierced ones, one side is kind of open and the other side's closed so I just need to like put something through. And then I've got my nose pierced. I haven't got um, anything in at the moment and I don't often wear something but I'm going to start again because I really love my nose piercing. Number eight, OTP. Right, okay, so I had to Google this one because some people have been passing on this not knowing what it means. And it actually means one true parent. And it actually refers to not a real life couple, but a couple in a series or a film or something like that. A so fandom. it's a fa it's called a fandom, which is basically, it's not real. It's a movie, it's a series. It could be a book, I suppose. It's just like fiction. A Ross and Rachel from Friends, because I love Ross and Rachel as a couple. Um, I just love the whole dynamics of their relationship throughout the series. I think they shared some lovely moments and I cried when they broke up and then I cried when Ross chased after her and he couldn't catch her in time and then he got back to his apartment and she left this long message and then she was saying to the, the, assist, the, the person on the plane, let me off the plane, I need to get off the plane. And he was like going, did she get off? And he was like shouting at the phone and then she opened the door and she just said, I got off. And then they kissed and they were happily ever after and I just love Ross and Rachel. That was probably far too long an answer, but yes, I love Ross and Rachel. So, favourite show. Right, this is really difficult because I have a lot of shows that I really love. But I'm going to say for my favourite show, I'd have to say Friends. Just because I used to watch everything, every episode. I used to sit every week waiting for it to come on. I'm sure it was on on a Thursday night at nine o'clock. I was obsessed with it. Um... And I was really disappointed when it ended, but we've got all 10 series on DVD. Um, when Tony got to a certain age, we actually watched the entire series all the way through on DVD. So I've shared it with Tony and she loves it as well. Um, but whenever it's on, and it's on every day, 
if there's nothing on or there's nothing that we particularly want to watch we'll put friends on and I can honestly say I've probably seen some episodes more than 30 or 40 times and I never get bored of those episodes they always make me laugh um, even though I've laughed at that funny moment 40 times before it's still funny and I love the characters and the relationships and yeah friends has definitely got my be my all-time favorite tv show Favourite bands? Right, I'm not a band person really, I like solo artists, but the one band I would have to say that I do love and have loved and still loved is NKOTB or New Kids on the Block. And they, I think they prefer to be known as NKOTB now because they're not exactly New Kids on the Block anymore. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love New Kids on the Block and they're coming to um, Newcastle in May and I'm hoping to get a ticket because I just think they're amazeballs <laughs> and I'm in love with Donny and he held my hand. This one, this one, it feels hot every time I talk about it because he grabbed a hold of my hand as he went past and it's hot now. Thinking of Donny holding my hand. You, you might remember you know, <sighs> How could he forget the girl with the red hair? Uh -huh. Right, um, something you miss. Right, for this I'd have to say I've put my two mollies and that is my nana, um, I very much miss my nana. Um, she passed away around 10 years now, or it's coming up to 10 years. Um, I spent a lot of time with my nana as a child. I used to spend all of my holidays with uh, my nana because my mum and dad were working and she would come and babysit me or if they were going out at night time and I just loved spending time with my nana. My nana was an amazing person and I know that I'm a lot like Um But I also miss our Molly. Um, if you've been with me for a while you'll know that we lost our one of our dogs last year on June the 28th. Um, our lovely little collie Molly. Um, Molly. Molly. <laughs> miss her very much. Still get upset that she's not here. Um, miss her presence in the house because they are fairy babies so they're incredibly special and to us and their family and i couldn't imagine the house without them because they're just these little people in fairy courts that live with you and they all have they all have um their own personalities that make them different and molly was just incredibly intelligent little thing and quite a serious little face and she loved to go in the car and she was just amazing and I miss her very much so um, yeah my two mollies would be the, be the things I miss the most. Favourite song? Well I've got an all-time favourite song that will always be my favourite song but this is a song that's been my favourite for a very long time and it's always going to be my favourite song. I'm not entirely sure why um, but it's one of my favourite artists Pink. I love Pink. I've seen her live four times and she's fabulous um, but <laughs> yes here is Millie. Millie! So um, my favourite song, sorry about that, my favourite song is Who Knew by Pink and it's on the I'm Not Dead album and it's amazing, that's an amazing album anyway but I love Who Knew, it's just an amazing song, I love the video and yeah it's fantastic. Fight. Ah! Okay, so the next question, leave him alone! Leave him, please. Is your Harry? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. So, um, the next question is, how old are you? And as I said before. <coughs> hey! Shit, that's him. That's her told. Like, oh, excuse me. Yes, this is what you have to put up with when you try to film downstairs. How old are you? I'm not telling you that because that's personal and ladies don't tell that. I know though. Tony knows. <laughs> I'm in my 30s, that's all I'm going to say. Um, zodiac sign. I am a Capricorn, which is very true um, because Capricorns are creative and a little bit stubborn and that is me. Um, qualities you look for in a partner. Right. First thing, when you see somebody, it's got to be eyes and smile. I love friendly eyes and a happy, friendly smile. I think you can tell a lot about somebody about their eyes and smile. And there's so many people in this world which really bugs me. You walk past them and you'll smile at them 
and they don't smile back. They sort of they just mm, grumpy face. And it costs nothing to smile. It makes you feel happier. It brightens their day. A smile is a wonderful thing. So somebody who can really smile at you and it's an honest, genuine, broad smile. I love that, and I love like smiling eyes. Now, favorite quote. I have two because one's a movie quote because we love movie quotes in this house. We tend to use them quite a lot. Um, but my non-movie quote would have to be live, love, laugh. It's incredibly simple, but it's been something that Alec and I have always associated with our relationship and a quote that means something to us. He got me a charm that goes on my bracelet, my Pandora, that says live, love, laugh. And I just believe that to live a happy life, you just need love and laughter. And those are the things that, you know, are incredibly special and make you happy. So I love live, love, laugh. And then I'd have to say for a movie quote, and I know it's absolutely ridiculous, it's just so simple, but it's what's your favourite scary movie? Because Scream is my favourite film, and I do want to have that tattooed on me somewhere, because I just love that line, I don't know why, as I said, it's very simple, but it's from Scream, and I just love it. So yes, I'd have to say what's your favourite scary movie? Favourite actor is Kevin Spacey. I was sitting going, favourite actor, favourite actor. Oh, how could I totally forget Kevin Spacey. I think he's amazing. I love his voice. I think he's just really gorgeous and handsome. And I love the films that he's been in. And I think he's just amazing. And yes, he's very sexy. I think Kevin's sexy. Number 18 is favourite colour and I put black and black is not a colour, but today it is because black is has always been my favourite colour. Um, I know that some people will say, oh, black's not a colour, because I've heard that before, but it is a colour. Um, I love black. I love wearing black. Black goes with anything, so that's what I say. Loud music or soft, I put loud. I love loud music. Filling the house and the floor, thumping with the bass. Love loud music. I love loud music in the car as well. Where do you go when you're sad? Well, in the house, um, I would have to say that when I'm sad I got my bedroom because that's like a, a place where I've got personal things but I can lie on the bed and I can snuggle into my cushions and put my DV over me and just kind of hide away from the world. How long does it take you to shower? Right, I don't shower very often. I take a bath every day. I have a bath every night, very late in the night but I always have a bath every night. I don't shower often. If I do shower... Um, it can go from two minutes because I just want to get in and feel refreshed and that's generally in hot weather or up to 10 to 15 minutes if I'm going to shave my legs and wash my hair and put conditioner and stuff on so or sometimes I just feel like like in cold weather sometimes it's quite nice to warm up by going in a nice hot shower and then I just enjoy standing under the hot water and it feels very refreshing and warms you up so between two minutes in the summer and around 10 to 15 minutes in the winter depending. But I like I think... in the shower for like 20 minutes Tony likes to move in. 5 minutes to wash and then 15 minutes to reflect on life. Yeah, that's, that's what most people do. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> how long does it take you to get ready in the morning? Again, I'm a woman. There are two answers for that one. Um, The first one is like for work. I'd say it takes me 30 minutes. That's how long it takes me to get up, get washed, get dressed and put my makeup on. So I think that's really fast actually, 30 minutes for all of that. And you know, organising the bag and chucking the dogs out to go for a wee and getting them a biscuit and doing Tony's hair and all that time. So I'm pretty impressed with 30 minutes. Um, but if we are going out somewhere and Alex here and I'm not going to work, probably about 45 minutes. Um, take me a good 15 minutes to kind of get like washed and dressed. I like to sort out what I'm going to wear and accessorise it. And then I'll take longer off my makeup. Just not because I need to, but because I just enjoy sitting, putting my makeup on and messing about with colours and things. So I just take a little bit more time to do that. Ever been in a physical fight? Uh, right, kind of, yes. I remember when I was on the bus, um, when I was at school, a friend of mine, um, kind of a funny friend she was an on off friend she was a bit of a strange person but she kind of like was doing this on the bus at me <laughs> fighting me i can't even remember what it's for turn on <laughs> okay at the moment my turn on <laughs> this is very strange because i'm a very strange person there's an advert at the moment on television for true detective um at the end of the advert for this program there's this bit of Matthew McConaughey's voice playing over the top of it 
And he says something deep and dark, detective. Something deep and dark. <sighs> it, it, it sounds better when Matthew But when says it, it's the way he says it because of his accent. Something deep and dark. It's the way he like rolls the R on the dark bit. It's like, ah. Oh. I just, I love his voice. Sometimes you have to go back and replay it. I like to replay it. I'm not gonna lie. I will replay it a few times because it's awesome. And I need to video it so I can keep that particular sentence. <laughs> because I'm just, it's just, do you know when you just hear something that's like, oh. Yeah, you probably don't because I'm a strange person. But at the moment, that's a turn on because I really like it. I just, I don't know. I really like hearing it. So <laughs> it makes me happy. <laughs> Just what is it you found? Something deep and dark, detectives. Something deep and dark. Turn off. I've put crude language and swearing. Um, I had a friend who I used to work with, a male friend, and when he was carrying on, he kind of said, oh, you douchebag. Now, I don't like that anyway. I think it's a horrible thing to call somebody. I just don't like it. Knowing what it is, it's just not a nice thing. Call anybody, I don't think. And... I don't know, I know it's just kind of banter, but I don't like it when ma men feel it's okay to use language and kind of derogatory terms to you as a woman. Even if they think it's playful and fun, I don't find that playful and fun. I don't like it. So I know that makes me sound prudish, I'm not. It's just I don't think that you need to do that, which is why I think I, why I love Alex humour so much, because Alex humour is very... Markham and Wise in a way, it's very soft and it's gentle and it's fun humour whereas I don't like that kind of crude humour so that I would have to say and language I don't think there's any need to swear a lot Alex says the odd feck <laughs> word yeah. um, but well, he doesn't he doesn't swear a lot I don't think no. so uh, yeah I don't like men that swear it's, you know, it's such a turn off the reason I joined YouTube Right, okay, so when I joined YouTube, it wasn't to make videos. It was actually just to watch videos and comment on videos. And I joined because I wanted to know how to do winged eyeliner. And it still evades me to this day because sometimes it goes wrong. Because wings, I don't know why, but they don't work every time. And you watch people like the beautiful Emma Pickles, who actually responded to me on Facebook the other day. And I had a mini meltdown because I think she's balls, And... She just goes, and a wing, and a wing, and then you're like, what? It's like fairies come and guide the pencil and make perfect little wings. Now, I can't do perfect wings every time, so it still annoys me that I can't do that. But I wanted to watch a video about how to do it, because I thought I could learn. But, you know, there you go. Seven or eight years later, I'm still learning. <laughs> Just sometimes does not happen for me. You know other stuff, but you're still learning. Yeah, I'm still learning that. That and contouring are the two things that evade me. Well, I have tried to contour today. From the knobbly bit on your ear, because Nikki from Nikki from Nikki Tutorials taught me that. I love Nikki. Anyway, I'm going off topic, but I wanted to see how to do winged eyeliner. So I went on and I wanted to comment as well because I thought, oh, I'll sign up and I'll be able to comment in people's videos. And the first person I ever found. First video, search for winged eyeliner, and it was Sarah Walker of Sarah Walker Makeup. And I thought she was fantastic. I must have gone totally berserk and watched every single video You're in about obsessed. a day. I was obsessed. It was like, wow, she's so great. I love the way she talks. I think she's really pretty. She's just a really nice person. So I was watching her, and then I came across Crystal of Crystal is 007 or Chrysalis. I think it's Chrysalis 007, so I'm not sure if she's a Bond fan. I must ask her at some point. But when she replies to me, I get... Oh. Bunny replied to me the other day as well. It's like, ah! Bunny replied to me. I know, I said, you think so? She's got two million followers. It's just awesome when people like that, who you really look up to, reply to you, especially when they've got so many people. And it's not that they make any special or anything, it's just they've seen your comment and wanted to answer it, and it's like, wow. That is amazing balls. Like when Pixie Wu once replied in Candy Johnson, it was like, oh. Anyway. Oh, Michelle Fan. Michelle Fan, oh my God, when she replied to me. <laughs> I cried. <laughs> I didn't really, but I felt like it. Anyway, so the first person I actually subscribed to was Crystal. Um, searching around and Sarah Walker was the second. But I actually only subscribed so I could comment on these people's videos and watch and learn. And then after you watch so many beauty videos, you're kind of like, 
if I could do this, I am enjoying makeup now and I'm trying new things and I could, I've got views on these products that I could share and I didn't think I could do tutorials or anything because I didn't think I was very good and I still don't think I'm very good at makeup but I enjoy it so it's fun and I do it so why not? Um, yeah so I thought why can't I give this a go? So I started to film on Tony's old laptop and I filmed using the webcam on there and it wasn't the greatest of quality if you go back to my first videos it's like but I would never remove them. Some people remove all their old videos because they're like, oh no, I can't look at them anymore. But that's part of my journey, so I'm gonna leave them there. I thought it'd be a great hobby. I also thought it'd be like a really great way to meet people from all over the world and chat to people about like similar interests. And I've made some amazing friends. Um, so I think it has been a fantastic experience. So that's why I joined. Fears. Right, I've put one because I would have said spiders, but to be fair, I can catch a spider and put it outside because I don't want to kill it. So I don't really have a fear of them. Wasps, probably, because I got stung by one. So I do get a little bit weird about wasps and woo and run. <laughs> weird. Only a little bit weird. Just a little bit. Just a little bit, really. really. Yeah, I don't mind bees, wasps. I'm terrified of wasps, uh, actually. It that, yeah, I only put one thing down, but wasps, I have to oh, say. Oh, it's school, right, when you walk, and then there's a bee, everybody just runs away, and I just keep walking. Bees are lovely. Because bees don't attack you, bees they be, attack you. Bees be all fluffy and friendly. <laughs> bees are not aggressive creatures, so they will only attack you if you are attacking them to defend themselves, whereas wasps are pure evil. They are the minions of the Antichrist. <laughs> <laughs> they just look at you and they're like, ooh, you don't like me. I'm going to sting you. Oh, what? It stings Millie, didn't it? <gasps> Millie actually tried to catch one once and it stung her. We don't know whether it was inside her mouth, her mouth or outside. And she came up in these big lumps everywhere, right? <laughs> then I went off to a concert on the night. I was going to see Britney Spears. And I came back and she was just this big swollen dog. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Nice. And all her body was swollen and her face was huge oh. and she looked like a pit bull and it was really funny. <laughs> I was like, that's not my dog. So we took her to the vets and they said, well, she doesn't look like she's had a reaction that's going to hurt her too much. Um, but you can have an injection if you want. It's £20. And I was quite happy to pay the £20 because I really oh. just wanted to make sure that she had something in her system that was going to counteract it. I didn't want her to have some kind of bad um, sort of reaction to it. So that's off topic. Uh, so wasps. Spooky. Minions of the Antichrist. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other thing I put is being buried alive. I am not going to be buried, I'm going to be cremated. Because the idea of waking up in a coffin, two feet, I don't care how many feet under oh, earth. It's like, you think about it, right? You can, uh, you can literally go to, you can literally like die and you can wake up again and then you're in this box and you're like, <laughs> it happens. There was a woman who they thought had died, they took her to the morgue and she woke up in the morgue. How terrifying must that be? But at least she woke up in the morgue. It's like years ago. I like to wake up in the morgue. Oh my god. Years ago, they would. Like on the table, not in the box thing. On the table. <laughs> in the bag and unzip yourself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no! We're going off topic. Sorry, sorry. But years ago, like, if they have, like, when they've, this is true, true fact here, when they, like, kind of have to make more room in graveyards and things, or if ever, you know, I don't know, I don't know how they discover it, but when they open some coffins, there's, like, scratch marks where they've walk up, I mean, we were talking, like, Victorian era, when they probably didn't check properly, you know, and they didn't know too much, like, medically about comas and things but people waking up in a coffin and then scratching to get out and just the horror of being in that situation is just too hard to bear mm -hmm. we watched an episode of csi i think it was called oh, grave secrets oh, yeah. and nick was in a coffin and i think we hyperventilated for a whole two hours of this episode <laughs> till they got him out who's like <gasps> and, and it's not I used to think it was because I'm claustrophobic, but it's not. It's just that fear that you're in that situation and you're going to die there and you're aware of it. I think my heart would probably explode mm -hmm. from just total fear. In fact, you see, it's making me itch. Right, we're not going to talk about that anymore. Last thing that made you cry. I wasn't feeling very well yesterday and Alex said something and it made me cry. He just sometimes just says things and he thinks it's teasing, but sometimes you take it a bit personally because yeah. I'm a girl. 
and I've got emotions and I've got hormones. So yeah, yeah that made me cry. He but, offends me sometimes. Yeah, but he apologised and he, he was lovely and he was like, you know, I don't mean it like that. I'm like, yes, I know, I know you don't mean it. <laughs> I don't know. I had a girl moment. Um, last time you said you loved someone. I told Alec I loved him today when ah. I got out the car. We always say love you when we say goodbye. So um, we went to the bank and I paid a bill and he brought me back and then, um, yeah. As I got, when I got out of the car, he kissed me and gave me a hug and we both said love you. Ah. Ah. So that's the last time I said love you. <laughs> Main and behind your YouTube name. I feel like these questions are a bit jumbled, but I think that should have been further up in their mind. Is that I am... Kevin Spacey's number one yeah. fan, I'm his number one girl. So I've had this email address for 14 years because it's my email. And so when I signed up to YouTube, I just, I thought Spacey's number one girl. And I've just always wanted to keep it, even when you could change it to your name. I didn't want to, I really like Spacey's number one girl because that is who I am, I'm Spacey. And I really like it, so I've always liked it. Um, Last book you read, okay. Um, I do a lot of research for my writing. Um, so this is quite a weird one and I can't tell you the author's name, I'm not entirely sure, but it's called Down Among the Dead Men. And basically it's actually like a non-fiction. It's about this woman that went to work in a morgue that was actually, it's like a hospital morgue. Um, and she was actually doing autopsies on bodies and things. So this is something that interests me because I'm a bit dark. <laughs> No, not really. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, it's because with my writing, I write a lot about crime and knowing like a lot about those kinds of procedures is very important because if you're going to write a scene that involves that, then you want to use the right terminology. You want to know how they do it, what the surroundings would be like, what kind of attitude those kind of people have. So it was a really useful book um, that I'll definitely be able to take forward what I've learned from it into my writing. So I really enjoyed it. And it says the book you're currently reading. Well, I am currently reading a book called Sycamore Raw. And it's a follow-on book, or like sort of years after though, from Time to Kill. It's by John Grisham. I love reading. I read a lot. Right, last show you watched. Um, the last show we watched, we watched The Walking Dead last night. Because it was on on Monday. And with Alec working the hours he's been working, we weren't able to catch up on it till last night. And we are loving it. Um, we didn't used to watch it. Is this season four? Yes. Yeah. We didn't used to watch it. And then during season three, we kind of got into it. So what we did was um, we, we found it on demand on Sky, downloaded it, and we watched series one, two, and three and caught up with it. Now so we're down with the kids. Now we're down with the kids. We love The Walking Dead. We love the characters. It's a fantastic thing. And sometimes it's a little slow paced, but we're quite happy with that. We don't need it to be fast paced, we just really enjoy the story and the characters and the dynamics. So yeah, that was the last thing I watched. Hi. Last person you talked to, Tony. Hi. <laughs> right there. <laughs> <laughs> the relationship between you and the person you last talked to, she's my daughter, and her mum. Mum? Mum? What, Emma? Mum. Mum. Um, mom. I'm mum. Oh, as the Americans say, mum. Mum. Some people say mum. Mum. I call my mum mum, but you call me mum. Yeah, I always just say mum. Mum. I don't know why. I'm different. Oh yeah. Favorite food. Right now, this is a complicated <laughs> one, right? Because I wouldn't say there's anything that I think. Oh, I really need to eat this like on a really, really regular basis. Um, but there's nothing that I could say. Well, you know, I really need to have it. So there was only one thing I could think of, which is. It's strange because it's very particular, but it's curry sauce, but it has to be from my Chinese across the street because their curry sauce just is amazing and it doesn't taste like curry sauce from anywhere else. And I've tried curry sauce from lots of different Chinese and nothing tastes like their curry sauce because it's my favourite and it's amaze balls. Thanks. Really. <coughs> so yes, curry sauce from my Chinese shop. Place you want to visit, I've put New York, I would love to go there, I think it's an amazing place, um, and I would love to go shopping there, oh, so, I love the yeah, I, I think places. it's just be amazing to visit, and lots of different places to visit, so definitely New York, plus that's where Friends is based, so that'd be cool. Last place you were, 
This is a funny one because, like, it depends where you're filming. <laughs> it's a bit strange. As a living room. Last place I was, well, I'm here now, and that was. Really? The living room. Last place you were was here. <laughs> Bef before that, I was in the dining room moving furniture because I could not leave furniture alone. <laughs> So this week I've rearranged the front room and the dining room. They're the main rooms that I've changed because I can't really change my bedroom around. Oh, so <laughs> stop it! It's not ow, Jurassic ow, Park. Ow, ow, ow. Right. So. Oh my god. Stop! Stop on your feet. So the la Excuse me! <laughs> Don't bite his ass. Right. <laughs> there he is. Oh, Harry. Okay. So last place I was was in the dining room rearranging <laughs> furniture. But Alec will come in. Oh, you've moved things. <laughs> and I'll get wrong because I moved the dining room table by myself, which I'm not supposed to do. No. <laughs> but I did it anyway. I just slid it slowly. I took my time. Do you have a crush? Oh, yes, I have lots of crushes. Just look at the list. I have a huge list. That list is just okay. amazing. Okay. Kevin Spacey, of course. I've crushed on him forever. I put Idris Elba, because he's gorgeous. Um, Nathan Fillion, who is Castle. Donnie Wahlberg from Your Kids on the Block. Also Jordan Knight. Um, Matthew McConaughey. Oh. <laughs> so we already know. Oh. <laughs> Um, Jim Caviezel, who is in Person of Interest, he is just gorgeous. I just could just look at him all day. He looks amazing in a suit. Yeah. Kevin Bacon, <coughs> um, we love him in the following. And then Martin Kemp, because uh, he's Alec just gorgeous. Baconites. Yeah, we're Baconites, because we just love Kevin Bacon. And anything Kevin's in, we want to watch. Um, I don't know what it is about them. There's just something about the bacon. I don't know what it is, <coughs> but he's amazing. Last time we kissed someone, I kissed Alec goodbye. But I did just kiss Harry oh, yeah. on the mush. Um, but no, I kissed Alec goodbye when he was going off to another job he had to do. Last time you're in Solid. Right, I have to say, I don't mean this in an awful way, probably on YouTube, um, because recently I cut a couple of negative comments on one of my videos about my weight. Um, I think it's disgusting that there are haters and bullies out there who think it's perfectly acceptable from the safety of their little room behind the computer screen down an ethernet cable where they can't be seen they feel that they can make derogatory comments about somebody that they don't even know they don't know your circumstances they don't know you as a person it's just unfair i would never put somebody down who i didn't know i would never put somebody down who i did know <laughs> i'm not that kind of person i like to offer constructive criticism but i'd never be like that person i think it's just horrible so yeah yeah so we don't like those kinds of people, cyber bullies. Favourite flavour of sweet? Now, um, is, I think this is because it's like not chocolate, so I think I'm all sort of like candy type sweets. So my two favourites, because I couldn't distinguish, because I just, if I get a bag of these, I get a bag of each. And it's chocolate limes and blackcurrant licorices, because I love them. I love, I don't know, I just love sucking those sweets. Chocolate limes are amazing. It really takes me back to my nana. That's where I first tasted them. My nana had a bag of them. And I just remember saying, oh, what have you got there? Because they smelled really interesting and tasting them and just loving them. So chocolate limes for me um, kind of give me memories, but I love the flavour. So, and I really want a bag now. Oh, my God. Oh, look. He's just a teddy. What instruments do you play? Um, I was in recorder group when I was at school. So I can play the recorder. I've oh. probably forgotten most of it, but yes, I can play recorder. And I can also play piano. Um, not fantastically well, but I know chopsticks. I can play keyboard and I, I used to play guitar and ukulele. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I can play a little I bit of piano sure and I can read music. Because <coughs> I'm a chop. Favourite piece of jewellery? This is difficult because... What about, what about your wedding ring and your engagement ring? Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite piece of jewellery is a necklace that my mum and dad bought me. I don't have the chain anymore, that snapped. Um, don't look at me now. But it's an Arwen necklace, it's a, a direct copy of the necklace that Arwen wears in Lord of the Rings, so it's exactly the same dimensions and it's the same colour and I absolutely love it and I've actually put it on a short a sort of cord necklace and I just love it so much, it's such a beautiful necklace, so that definitely has to be my favourite piece of jewellery. 
Last sport you played, I can't really think, but the only thing I can think it would be would be either football on the beach with Tony when she was younger or tennis in the backyard. It's been a long time since I've played a sport. I'm not a sporty person. Never have been and never will be. Last song you sang, I sang the awesome song from Lego. Yes, I love that song. Just YouTube it. Lego movie awesome song i'm sure that there must be some videos there of that song because it's just it gets stuck in your head we saw that the other day it was an amazing film but that song just sticks in your head so that was the last thing i was singing um favorite chat up line i don't have one i'm gonna be honest i've never had anybody use a chat up line on me and i've never used one on anybody else which kind of answers the next question so no i don't have a favorite chat up line and i've never used one which is the next question is have you used it Last time you hung out with anyone, Tony, last night, we like to, we have a lot of TV programmes that we like and we, we schedule everything and we know what's on every night and then we sit and we watch it and we enjoy it. And some people might think that's very sad, but we enjoy it. We enjoy our TV programmes and we sit together and we talk about them. The only thing that we didn't talk through was True Detective. We were so hooked. We but normally, a little bit, but not, that much. not that much. Normally we'll pause things and we'll talk about them and what, you know, but um, yeah, we love to sit and watch things together and chat about them and get excited about things coming back and oh, it's the end of the world when a programme ends and then it says, and that's the end of the series and we're like, yeah. ah! That's what we did when the following ended. When the following ended, <laughs> we were screaming. We're like, no. And Alec actually came in and was like, oh, what's going on? So yes. The ended. <laughs> Eli looks at us like, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> right. Who should answer these questions next? <coughs> right, I tag anybody who makes videos because this is actually a lot of fun. I think you can learn quite a bit about somebody from this and it is fun to do. Um, some of it's a bit personal, like I think weight and age is a personal thing, um, but it is a lot of fun and I had a lot of fun answering these questions. Um, so I would say people I would tag, um, knickknack1171, Kate Gibbo, Chucky Cards, Holly Loves Beauty, The Fairy Kelly, Here's Bets, Sue in Wonderland 81, SJ531, and anybody who makes videos, and if I haven't tagged you and you make videos and you watch me, sorry, but anybody who makes videos should definitely give this tag a go. It's a lot of fun, and I really enjoy doing it. So, I'm going to go and get a drink now, because I've got a really dry throat. On. Is Harry waving? <laughs> you should really watch it back, really. <laughs> I can't wait for that. Right, so that's it for now. So I'm going to love and leave you and see you all soon. Bye. Harry. Harry. Oh, got to get in on it. Got to get in on it. Dang it. <laughs> you can so tell that I've just seen the Lego movie. Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of a team. Everything is awesome when you live in the dream. Something like that. I don't know. There's lots of people out there. Don't lick that. <laughs> so you don't want to know. Good girl. Oh. Oh. oh, Millie. Millie, you're so... Can't you just sit? Right, um... <laughs> oh.